Welcome back to Timeline the World History. This is by Shane Soresby and it's read by me, Dan, the fan of history. Today we focus on the 9th millennium BC, a time when world population levels were approximately 5 million people. Northern Eurasia continued to be resettled by Mesolithic people as glaciers uh, retreated. Further north and the beginning of settlements were starting to occur in the Middle East following the drought conditions of the previous millennium caused by the Younger Dryas. And first we got to talk about the Folsom culture. Uh, the gradual warming and retreat of the glaciers following the end of the Younger Dryas caused environmental changes that led to the extinction of the mammoth and other megafauna in North America. This led to changes in strategy in regards to hunting, technology and social organization of hunting groups. In 9000 BC, the Folsom culture replaced previous Clovis ways of life. In Manitoba, the warming trend had a major effect on vegetation. Lake Agassiz that had appeared and caused the Younger Dryas still dominated the southern landscape, changing its shape and extent frequently in response to the retreat of glaciers over thousands of years. On land, grasslands expanded northwards, replacing the spruce forests that had been the home of the mammoth, a much larger version of the modern bison known as Bison Antiquities was found on these ever-expanding grasslands. The Folsom people had to adapt to these changes in conditions and through modifications in weaponry, hunting tactics and resource use. They were able to exploit the grasslands by hunting the giant bison in large numbers using thinner projectile points halted, uh, hafted onto spears. It was also believed that the first use of the atlatl, the spear thrower, was used to increase the length of the hunter's arm to throw the spear further with increased speed. Very little is known in regards to settlement organization. Archaeological sites consist of numerous bone fragments and shipping debris that suggest short-term uh, occupation, seasonal occupation. As for religion, discoveries of a large post mold, an antler flute, projectile point and butcher dog remains at the Jones Miller site in Colorado are reminiscent of the medicine post ceremony used among historic Northern Plains people to ensure a successful hunt. Uh, this is an early Mesolithic culture of Northern Europe called the Maglemosian culture. It originates from the archaeological site of Maglemose in Denmark, Maglemose, which was excavated in 1900 by George Saraur. These people lived in an environment containing forests and wetlands, ideal for fishing and hunting, using tools made out of wood, bone and flint microliths. These include sharply edged spears and arrowheads made out of flintstone, as well as, specific, as a specific type of fishing spear known as a leister. Although some of these people may have settled down, the majority continue to live a nomadic lifestyle, Albeit with the help of man's best friend, the domesticated dog. Sea levels were still much lower than today with Europe and Scandinavia landlocked with Britain via Doggerland for another 3000 years or so. Just look at this map. Very different from today. Evidence of the spread of Meglemosian culture into the eastern part of Britain was found by local amateur archaeologist John Morse in 1947 on the edge of the former Lake Flixton, situated in the Vale of Pickering near Scarborough in North Yorkshire. Radiocarbon dating indicated that a site known as Star Car was occupied on a seasonal basis between 877 and 8460 BC, which places the site in the early Mesolithic period. Between 1949 and 1951, Sir Graham Clark carried out excavations of the site, finding barbed antler points that were used to hunt beaver, fish, deer or elk. However, also recovered in the initial excavation were 21 headdresses made out of red deer skulls and antlers. The top half of the skull was carefully removed with the antlers still in place before the lower foot of the antler shafts were removed. 
Finally, two holes were carved using a flint tool on either side of the skull to allow some kind of fastening to be tied underneath the shin. Clark suggested that a headdress was used as a disguise in order for Mesolithic hunters to seek their prey without detection. I don't think deers are that stupid. They're like, oh, that's just a deer. We are safe. However, archaeologists today suggest that they were actually used for ceremonial purposes by a shaman or priest in order to fuse with the spirit of the deer. And that makes more sense to me. Further excavation was carried out by the Whale of Pickering Research Trust in the 1980s. On the shoreline of the remains of Lake Flixton, evidence of sophisticated carpentry began to emerge as new timbers were revealed. Sections of what appeared to be a well-built platform or trackway extended at least 30 meters along the shore of the former lake. This is evidence of the earliest known example of carpentry in Europe. It was made from planks that had been split from a larger piece of wood by hammering wedges following the natural grain. Some of the edges had been smoothed by using a flint adzi before being laid upwards with the rough sides sunk into the mud. Excavation carried out northeast of the platform in 2008 identified evidence of a further structure with a diameter of 11 feet that was interpreted as a hut. Post holes indicated that the structure was made out of 18 wooden posts with a diameter of 7.9 inches that possibly had either a conical or rounded frame covered with hides, thatched, turf or bark. The floor was covered with a layer of moss, reeds and other soft plant materials. 7.9 to 12 inches deep. When Clark published his initial analysis in 1954, he proclaimed that Starcar was a small camp of mobile hunter-gatherers. However, the excavation team of 2008 see the site very differently. They say that it was used on a seasonal basis with highly mobile groups, groups moving out before bringing Flint back from as far as 40 kilometers away. Other groups may have occupied the site on a more permanent basis, using their skills in carpentry, boat building and antler working. Possibly as a result of the falling water level in Lake Flixton, the site was abandoned in approximately 8400 BC. Moving further north to the banks of the Firth of Forth in southern Scotland, the earliest known remains of human settlement in Scotland were uncovered by the Edinburgh Archaeological Field Society at Cramond. Uh, originally searching for remains of a Roman bathhouse, the team found at the base of a trench shirt stone tools and hazelnut shells that revealed a stratified Mesolithic site that had been uncontaminated by later usage. With the help from Edinburgh City Council, Historic Scotland and National Museums of Scotland, the site was radiocarbon dated to approximately 8500 BC. This represented an ideal Mesolithic location for hunter-gatherers to access a wide range of freshwater and marine resources. Pits and stakes holes provided evidence of an encampment in the area. So now we move into the pre-pottery Neolithic, that's between 8500 to 7600 BC. This was the first stage of the Neolithic period that covered the Levant and Anatolia between 8500 and 7600 BC. This time period is characteristic, characterized by small circular mud brick dwellings, cultivation of crops, hunting of wild game and unique burial customs in which bodies were buried below the floors of dwellings. Pottery was still not in use. Archaeological sites are much larger than those of the preceding Natufian hunter-gatherer culture. Settlements are characterized by round semi-subterranean houses with stone foundation and terrazzo floors. Upper walls were constructed of unbaked clay mud bricks with convex cross sections, small hearths were covered with the cobbles. Heated rocks were used in cooking that led to accumulation of firecracked rock in buildings. Almost every settlement contained storage bins that were made either of stones or of mud brick. The most notable settlement is Jericho, the world's oldest inhabited city that was previously founded by the Natufians near the Ain As-Sultan spring in approximately 9000 BC. 
Under the pre-pottery Neolithic area, the town grew to a population of between 2,000 and 3,000 people. That's a lot at this time. Protected by a 12 feet high and 5 feet 11 inches wide stone wall that was used to protect against flooding rather than raids from local bandits. In the center of one of the walls was a tower that was used for ceremonial purposes, casting the shadow of a nearby mountain on the summer solstice to create a sense of power for the ruling elite. The culture is unique for its burial practices. Uh, Kathleen Kenyon found no fewer than 279 burials underneath the floors and foundations, as well as between walls, just stuff your house with your relatives. Later on in the pre pottery Neolithic period, uh, the skulls were dug up and painted for display. Stone tools consisted of blades struck from regular cores with sickle blades and arrowheads, continuing from the preceding Natufians. Axes and adzes appear for the first time. As people began to settle in settlements like Jericho, cultivation of domesticated varieties of barley, wheat and wild oats were carried out and they were stored in granaries. Despite this, hunting continued to supplement their diets until the mid 8th millennium BC. But with the granaries in usage, people could live in the same place all year round. And then we have a name that I will surely butcher. It's the Nans Huang Tao culture. The first Neolithic culture to emerge in China was Nan Huang Tao, a site discovered in 1986 in the Taihang Mountains on the western border of the North China Plain. During excavations in 1986, 1987 and 1997, uh, stone tools, including five slabs and four mullers, were recovered along with numerous pottery shards. Radiocarbon dating suggests that the occupational phase of the Nang Chuang Tao site was between 8500 and 8000 BC. A further site at Donghulin on the Saitang Basin, 78 kilometers west of Beijing, was discovered in 2001. Dated to between 8000 and 7500 BC, the site contained pottery shards, ground stone slabs, approximately 144 mullers, hearts, and two human burials. More than 10,000 bone fragments contained remains of red deer, wild boar, and black bear. But it was the discovery of the shard seeds of millet that would determine that this was the start of something new in Eastern Asia. It is generally understood that this was the start of the domestication of foxtail millet and broom corn millet in northern China, where they became the most dominant plant food crops as opposed to wheat and barley elsewhere. Ancient starch grain assemblages recovered from deposits included carbonized residues on pottery shards as well as the aforementioned stone grinding tools. These residues allow for the fact that it, provide, it proved that foxtail millet was cultivated for at least two millennia, during which time the crop was undergoing domestication, hence the start of the Neolithic period in China. A full transcript of this episode can be found on timelineofworldhistory.wordpress.com and thefanohistory.wordpress.com so check those sites out otherwise join us next time as we reach the start of the 8th millennium BC